Lesson 8, I will use the area model and multiplication to show the equivalence of two fractions. In Lesson 7, we talked about how you can use the area model and multiplication to show the equivalence of two fractions, and we're going to continue that again in this lesson. So let's go ahead and get our math journals ready. I want you to write today's date in Lesson 8, Equivalent Fractions. When you're ready, go ahead and come back and we'll get started. All right, so first of all, I want you to draw an area model to represent two-thirds, just like the one that you see here. And I want you to draw three horizontal lines across the area model. When you finish drawing that, I want you to come back. All right, so let's take about this for a minute. What happened to the fractional units? For example, this is a third and this is a third. But whenever I divided it into four parts, what happened to the parts? They got smaller, right? There's more of them but they got smaller. And what happened to the number of units? Well, they increased. I went from three parts to 12 parts. So what happened to the two thirds? Their size didn't change, but the number changed, right? So the pieces got smaller because the parts got greater. Just like if this were a pizza or let's say a candy bar. If this were a candy bar and I was gonna share it with three friends, then I'm going to get this piece, and my friend will get this piece, and my other friend will get this piece, and we would get pretty decent sized pieces. But if we decided instead of sharing this with three friends, we were going to share it with 12 friends, my candy bar is not going to change size, but my pieces are going to have to get smaller if I'm going to have enough to give to everybody. So even though the number of pieces is greater, the size becomes smaller. All right, so I want you to think for just a minute. How can we represent two-thirds and eight-twelves using multiplication? This goes back to lesson seven. All right, I want you to write this in your math journal. If you didn't already write this, I want you to write two-thirds is equal to two times four over three times four, which equals eight-twelve. This is just like what we did yesterday. The only difference is in lesson seven, all of our fractions were unit fractions. So instead of having two-thirds, we would have had one-third. But it's still the same principle. We're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. All right, so how do you know the fraction is still representing the same amount? Well, it's still the same amount because the shaded area did not change. I just broke the parts down into smaller pieces. Okay, so you can see, and we've already kind of talked about this, what's different about this problem than the ones that we did yesterday. And what's different is the problems that we did in lesson seven, all of our numerators were just one, but in this one, our numerator is two. So that's the only difference. Yesterday, we were talking about unit fractions, and today we're talking about more than one. That's the only difference. All right, so let's draw one more area model before we get started on our problem set. I want you to draw an area model to represent 5, 6. And then I want you to find an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 12. So basically you're drawing an area model, you're dividing it into 6 parts, and you're shading 5 out of 6. And then I want you to look at your area model and think to yourself, what fraction would you create with the denominator of 12? It should look something like this. Okay, so here's your 5 out of 6. And then I'm going to divide it in half. So now instead of having six parts, I have 12 parts. And then take a look. So instead of five sixes, now I have 10 twelfths. But they are still equivalent. And see how we can use multiplication. Make sure that you copy this multiplication sentence in your math journal. Okay? So if the whole is the same, is three fourths equal to six eighths? Is that true or is that false? Well, let's find out, okay? Let's represent using a number sentence using multiplication, and we're also gonna draw an area model in our math journals to show the equivalence. So first of all, let's take 3 fourths, and let's see. if Can we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number to get 4 eighths? And the answer is yes. You can multiply the numerator by two, and the denominator by two, and you get 6 eighths. So if you can multiply both parts of this fraction by the same number, then yes, they are equivalent. And here is an area model proving it. So here is three out of fourths, and then I decompose it into eight parts. So go ahead and make sure that you put this area model and this number sentence in your math journal. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to move on to our problem set. We need to go ahead and write your name at the top, 
And I want you to notice that it tells us right here that each, repre each rectangle represents one hole. So that's why none of these area models are labeled as one hole because it tells us right here that they all equal one hole. So we don't have to label that every single time. The shaded fractions have been decomposed into smaller units. Express the equivalent fractions in number sentence. In a number sentence using multiplication, the first one has been done for you. So you can take a look and you can see that on the first one, it started out as two-thirds, and we multiplied the numerator and the denominator by two, and we got our equivalent fractions of four-sixths. Okay, so this is a good example of what we're expected to do. All right, so we're going to do the same thing over here. We started with three-fourths, and then they took the numerator and the denominator, and they multiplied it by the same number, and we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of 12. So in that case, we would have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by three in order to get an equivalent fraction. All right, let's take a look at C. Okay, so <clears throat> we began with five, or excuse me, four fifths. I'm actually gonna write this over here because I'm kind of a little squished at the bottom. So I started with four fifths and we took four and we took five and we multiplied the numerator and the denominator by the same number and we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of 10. And you can see right here that they decomposed this in half. So they doubled the number of parts. So they multiplied the numerator and the denominator by two. So four fifths is equal to eight tenths. Why don't you try to do D by yourself and then come back and see how you did. All right, so hopefully you paused the video and you attempted to do this by yourself. The worst thing that happens is you don't get it right, and that's okay. You learn a lot by trying to do this by yourself. All right, so I began with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 6. I'm going to put it over here because I have more room. I began with 5, 6, and I can tell that I doubled the number of pieces because I divided them in half. So in that case, I'm going to multiply the numerator by 2, and I'm going to multiply the denominator by 2. And instead of 5, 6, I now have 10 out of 12. And I can count and see if that's correct. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 out of 12. Okay, so the bottom has a little bit of different directions. Decompose the shaded fractions into smaller units as given below. Express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using multiplication. All right, so right here, this is divided into five parts. The directions say decompose it into tenths, so that means that we are going to divide it in half one time like this. Now I have to express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using multiplication. So I began with three-fifths, and I took the numerator and the denominator, and because I doubled the number of parts, I'm going to multiply both of these by two, and that gives me six out of ten. And I can go back and count. One, two, three, four, five, six out of 8, 9, or excuse me, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I had 6 out of 10. All right, so this time it's divided into 5 parts. So I want to decompose it into 15 parts. So that means I'm going to triple the number of parts. So if I'm going to triple them, I'm going to have to decompose this twice. So now I've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So I began with 3 fifths, and I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by three. So now, instead of three-fifths, I have nine-fifteenths. All right, now we have to draw area models to prove that the following number sentences are true. So first I'm going to draw an area model to represent the first one. So it says two-fifths is equal to four-tenths. So I'm gonna start by drawing my area model. I'm gonna do it in this space over here. And I have to make this represent 2 out of 5. So I have to divide this into 5 parts. So that means I have to draw 4 lines. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now I've divided it into 5 parts. I'm going to make this actually reach the top here. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since it's 2 fifths, I have to shade 2 out of 5. So let me get my highlighter here. I'm going to shade 2 out of 5. 
Now I'm trying to make, I'm trying to prove that this is the same as four tenths. So look at what happened to the number of parts. They doubled. So that means I've only got to decompose this one time, just like this. So now I have two fifths is equal to four tenths. It does not say that I have to use multiplication. It just says draw the area model. All right, so let's try B. Okay, so again, we're going to begin by illustrating two thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my area model and I'm going to divide it into thirds. So that means I'm going to divide this with two lines and I've got to shade two out of three. So I'm going to get my highlighter because remember when you shade, it's really important that you can still see where you divide it, your area model. If you shade it too dark so that you can't see your lines of division, it's not going to make it as effective. You're going to have a hard time reading it. All right, so now I've got two out of three. Now it says that I need to make these twelfths. So it didn't double. Look at what you'd have to do to go from three to four. It didn't triple. It actually quadrupled. So that means that I have to divide each of these into four parts. So that means I'm going to have to draw three lines like this. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, all right, why don't you try to do C by yourself and then come back and let's see if we did it the same way. All right, so hopefully you tried to do this one all by yourself. I kind of messed up here with my line, so I'm going to go ahead and get in here and delete this line. So I'm going to start with my area model. Hopefully you did too. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to try to show three, six. So we're going to go ahead and make my lines and I'm going to divide this into six parts. So I'm going to start by dividing this in half and then I'm going to divide each half into thirds. That way they'll be a little bit closer to being the same size. They won't be perfect, but they'll be a lot closer. All right, so now I'm going to go back and count and make sure that I do have six. It's really important that you do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I do have six and it says that I need to shade three out of six. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to shade three. Okay, so now I have three sixes and I have to prove that this is the same as six twelves. Well, I'm going from six parts to twelve parts, so that means that it doubled. So to show that it doubled, I only have to decompose it once, just like this. So now instead of six parts, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve out of twelve parts. All right, try to do the last one all by yourself. Okay, pause the video and then come back and let's check and see if we did it the same way. Okay, so let's begin by drawing our area model to represent sixes. So again, I'm going to divide this into half and I'm going to divide each half into thirds, just like I did the last one. And then I'm going to shade four out of six. So let me get my five lines drawn and then I'm going to go back and count and make sure that I do have six. So let's count, make sure we have six. One, two, three four, five, six. And I've got to shade four out of six. I'm going to go ahead and get my highlighter and I'm going to shade four. All right, so now I have four sixes. So again, I'm decomposing these into twelves. So when I look at my number of units, I went from six total to twelve total. So all I did was double. So I'm just going to divide this in half, just like I did the last one. Okay? All right, so let's just keep going here. All right, now it says use multiplication to rename each fraction below. So we could do this a lot of ways because it doesn't give us any direction. But we just know that we have to take the numerator and the denominator and we have to multiply them by the same number. It doesn't matter what number it is, we just have to multiply them by the same number. So for A, I think I'm going to go ahead and go easy and I'm going to multiply both of them by 2 which is going to give me an equivalent fraction of 6 eighths. So for B, I've got 4 fifths, and I think this time just for fun, I could multiply this by 2 just like I did the last one, but I think I'm going to go ahead and multiply this one times 3. And now my equivalent fraction is 12 fifteenths. So why don't you try it with 7 6? Pick a number, any number, doesn't matter. I wouldn't pick a number that I didn't know how to multiply that was going to cause me a lot of work, but pick a number and multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. The only number that you cannot choose is 0 or 1 because that would not give me an equivalent fraction. 
All right, so I think I'm going to choose four. And now I have 28 20 fourths. And you can see that this is an improper fraction or greater than one because I have more parts than I have, but that's okay. All right, the same thing here. I'm going to do 12 sevenths. I think this time I'm going to just multiply times two, keep it kind of easy. And I'm going to end up with 24 fourteenths as an equivalent fraction. All right, so it says, determine which of the following are true number sentences. Correct those that are false by changing the right-hand side of the number sentence. Okay, so first of all, I want to determine, is 4 thirds equal to 8 ninths? Remember, in order for these to be equal, that means that I should be able to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number to get 8 ninths. But if I'm going to get 8 on the top, I have to multiply times 2. And to get 9 on the bottom, I'm going to have to multiply times 3. So this is not an equivalent fraction. So I'm going to call this false. So it says to correct the right-hand side. So this is the right-hand side. So I can either change the numerator or the denominator. Well, the denominator, if we want to change the numerator, the denominator was multiplied times 3, so I would have to multiply the numerator times 3, which instead of 8 ninths would give me... 12 ninths. I could also have chosen to change the denominator. So since the numerator was multiplied times 2, I could have multiplied the denominator times 2 and made this 8 sixes. Either way, it was incorrect and now it is correct. Let's try one more together. All right, so I've got 5 fourths is equal to 10 eighths. All right, so I want to see if I can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number to get 10 eighths. So to get from 5 to 10, I multiply times 2. To get from 4 to 8, I multiply times 2. So yes, this is true because I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by the same number and I got the fraction that it said. Why don't you try C? Decide if you think that this is true or false. Pause the video and then come back when you are finished. Alright, so hopefully you paused the video and you attempted to do this by yourself. So here's the way I'm going to work this out. I'm going to see if I can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number and get 12 tenths. Well, to go from 4 to 12, I have to multiply times 3. To go from 5 to 10, I have to multiply times 2. Because these are not the same, then this is false. So now I have to correct it. You could have corrected it by changing the numerator. We could say, okay, we're going to multiply the numerator times 2. So instead of having 12 tenths, that would give you 8 tenths. So you could have changed the numerator to 8 and made it 8 tenths. Or you could have said, well, I'm going to keep the 12 and multiply the numerator, excuse me, the denominator by 3, which means you would have ended up with 12 fifteenths. Either one of those would have been correct. All right, try to do D all by yourself. I want you to pause the video and do not guess. Try to work it out because you do have a 50-50 chance if you guess, but I want you to really try to figure it out or else, even if you get it right, that doesn't really mean anything. Pause the video, think about it, put what you think, and then come back. All right, so let's work this out. So I have 4, 6, and basically I just want to see, can I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number to get to 12 eighteenths? So to go from 4 to 12, I have to multiply times 3. To go from 6 to 18, I have to multiply times 3. So since this is the same number, then this is true, and I don't have anything to correct. Okay, so today we worked a little bit more on fine equivalent fractions using multiplication. This is a continuation of what we did in Lesson 7. The only difference is we worked with numerators today that were not unit fractions. They were not just one. We chose numbers that were greater than one, and it was still the same. You just have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number to come out with an equivalent fraction.